We're going to do some at least and at most probabilities involving coins. I'm going to do two coins first, and then we'll see an example with three coins. I know that whenever I'm constructing the probability, it's going to be the number of favorable outcomes. I'm just going to abbreviate divided by the total number of outcomes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to come up with the total possible outcomes using a tree diagram. I've got two coins that I'm tossing, so I'm gonna label them coin number one and coin number two. I flip that first coin and it can land on either heads or tails. Now I can pair these with what I get when I flip the second coin. So the second coin can also land on either heads or tails. So I could pair that first heads with the heads or tails and that first tails with either a heads or a tails. To come up with my sample space, I'm gonna follow the branches through. That's gonna give me heads, heads, and then heads, tails. Moving over to the other part of my tree diagram, that's gonna be tails, heads, and tails, tails for four total possible outcomes. Let's move on to part A. So for part A, what's the probability of getting exactly one head? So I want the probability of getting one head. That's gonna happen with a head tail or a tail head. So that gives me two favorable outcomes out of the four total, which is one half. Okay, part B. Part B, I wanna know the probability of getting at least one head. That means that I would take one or more. So as I put this together, this is really the probability of one or I could have two heads as well. So as I go through my sample space, this time I'm gonna choose anything that has two heads or a single head. So I've got one here, one here, and one here. So I've got two and then the one, that's a total of three out of the four, and you could represent that as 0.75 or 75% as well. Okay, part C. Part C is an at most question. So if I want the probability of getting at most one head, that means that I will take one at the very most. So zero or one are gonna be our cases. I can express that as the probability of one or zero heads. Let's go ahead and identify that over here in our sample space. I've got two in the first one, so that's not gonna be a favorable outcome. Heads, tails though tails heads and tails tails, I again get three out of four or 0.75. Now let's move on to three coins in our sample space. Now we're gonna look at some probabilities at least and at most with three coins. Now I could go ahead and draw my tree diagram here. It would just branch off from the one that I had before, but instead I wanna use the multiplication principle to come up with the number of total possible outcomes. I'm gonna call that N. I can use what we call the multiplication principle. So the number of ways that that first coin can land, heads or tails, that's two times the number of ways that that second coin can land, same thing, right? Heads or tails, so that's also two, times the number of ways that that third coin can land, also two ways, two times two times two is eight. This is our number of total possible outcomes. This is going to be our denominator. Let's move into part A here. So for part A, I wanna know the probability of at least one head. So the probability of at least one head, well, that's gonna be either one head or two heads or three heads. So I've got several different cases to work through, one, two, or three heads. Now, instead of working this through and counting up all of the possibility, what I notice is that the only thing that I don't have is all tails, which would be zero heads. So there's only one that I don't need. Well, if there are eight possible, that means that there are seven that I do want, one that all tails case that I don't want. So I've got seven favorable outcomes out of the eight. 
We could also think of this as a complement where we take one or 100% the probability of all possible outcomes and subtract the one that we don't want. And that would be the probability of getting zero heads. So if you do this, it's gonna be one minus one eighth, which is also going to give you seven eighths. But a really nice way of doing this, instead of writing out everything in your sample space. Now let's look at part B. In part B, I want the probability of getting at most two heads. So two is the largest number, which means for at most, I could end up with zero heads, one or two heads. So again, there's only one case that isn't covered here, and that would be three heads or heads heads and heads. So that's only one outcome out of my eight, but I can do this with a complement. So I can do one minus the probability of getting all three of those as heads, um, one minus one eighth, or you could just think that through there are seven favorable outcomes and we come up with our seven eighths. Thank you so much for watching.